So we're a 110-year-old family-owned business. We've been here in Oregon that entire time. And uh, Fred Leupold started the business and was really in measurement devices. Um, as we evolved, his son, Marcus Leupold, got us into the rifle scope business. His wife, Ruth Leupold, was an avid hunter and got Marcus into hunting, interestingly enough. And uh, he was out hunting and missed a, a shot on a blacktail buck because his scope fogged up. And he decided, you know what, I can, I can do that better. He worked on that, which has now become our sole business. So to me, durability is job one. Um, we need to make sure that the quality of the product is top notch the entire time. Once the scope's done and we think it's ready, is it ready after we beat it 100 times? Is it ready in the cold? Is it ready in the warm? And so the reason being, if you can see through something, but it's not hitting where it used to be, or it's going to fail you, it's not doing you any good. So you can guarantee that we'll replace this when it breaks. But how do you do that when you're on a brown bear hunt or on a sheep hunt and you're up on the, up on the mountain? That scope can't fail. Here is where we actually make sure our forever warranty is completely valid. Uh, we impact our scopes for a series of very brutal impacts that is the equivalent of a six pound, one ounce, 375 Ackley improved. In those 5,000 impacts, we take them off at specific intervals and check for a point of impact shift that the shooter would have experienced throughout the duration of that test. The level of energy that we're actually impacting these scopes to, if you were shooting this rifle, during the, the pulse of recoil, you would be knocked unconscious. Um, each one of these impacts is at that level, but if they can pass this impact test, our forever warranty is, um, we have a good warm feeling about that one. What we have here are our environmental testing chambers. Uh, what we can do with these is take scopes and products uh, well under freezing and well over 100 degrees to see how the temperature affects the operation of the scope. Uh, it's important because the seals have to be intact. Uh, it has to be fog proof, waterproof. So one of the keys to loop hold is how light the scopes are. You'll notice when you pick up a loop hold and competitor scopes, a loop hold's much lighter. And that, that's done on purpose and it all starts with the main tube. Uh, we use uh, aircraft grade aluminum, of course, aluminum internals to keep the weight down. But the real reason you want a light scope, not only because it's easier to take in the backcountry or pack, but it actually uh, improves the longevity of the scope. So a lighter scope is going to dissipate the kinetic energy more efficiently from the rifle. And that's what leads to our, our return rate, which is less than one half of one percent. And I'm quite sure no one else can touch that. No one can handle our ruggedness. And I think part of being rugged is part of being an American, right? If you look at the traits of our company, and we talk about being American to the core, and that's, that's a bigger thing than um, just saying made in America. I don't think that's enough. I don't think made in America is enough for us. I think the reality is it has to have loophole quality with the fact that we make it here in this factory. It's the combination of those two that will make us absolutely the best. Here's the thing, glass, when you, when you look at it globally, glass comes from uh, just a small handful of global sources. So what you're seeing is a, there's a lot of marketing around the actual brand of glass itself. Where exactly did that, that blank come from? And that would be honestly kind of similar to saying which rubber tree did your race car tires come from? So I know it's easy to, to pick, well, it's this glass, so it's going to be great, but um, that's the analogy I use. Uh, the, the brand of rubber that's in the tire has nothing to do with the horsepower, the torque, the aerodynamics, uh, the, the stick, really, to the, to the track. It doesn't even, the tread, none of that. We test just about everything that we need to know about our products. We can measure the lenses, the transmission of the glass, transmission through the entire scope. We also test our competitors' products, so we know exactly what they got and what they don't got. Uh, our interferometer, we, we test to pretty high standards. Um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and take a picture. It is actually looking at the surface of this lens, projecting out and matching the surface of the lens under test. 
any deviation that we see, this looks like it's 0.06 of a wave, which is a very, very tiny amount of error in our lenses. Here we're looking at a 1951 Air Force Resolution target. And this target was designed well, by the military, but to allow us to determine what's the smallest detail any scope can see. And we also measure contrast with uh, similar targets. The lenses are one piece. For those that have ever been to a, like a slide projector show where you're trying to project the, the image of the TV or whatever up on a wall, if you turn these overhead lights on, you've got interference, and that's glare. So that's, we've seen that in the field where you're, you're looking over at a deer and the sun is either rising on that side or in some cases setting. The sky is bright. You try to see that deer or that elk or whatever it is and it, you, can, you can see the bright sky and it almost blinds you to the, to the deer. That's glare. So you can manage that on the inside through mechanics um, so that you're taking off axis light and eliminating it. And that's one of the big things that we do. Uh, the second thing is that you can make sure you're getting the right light transmission. So any scope is going to look good in here. We've got fluorescent lights. This is replicating um, a gun counter in here, right? Nice, easy on the eyes. That's not what you see in real life. So you'll go into a department store and you'll pick up a $1,500, $1,600 optic, say one of ours, say a VX6 or a VX5 HD, and you pick up this very, very expensive optic and you go, man, this one over here is $400 and it seems so much brighter and you're in a big box store with lots of lighting out there and you go man this is a lot brighter and you know what they're telling me they have an unlimited lifetime warranty so I'm gonna go with this one you get that home you mount it on your rifle you get out into the bush you're on a hunt and as that light fades you actually have no idea you've been duped because you've got nothing next to it to compare it to all right my name is Griffin I'm a uh, go hunt member um, was actually invited to come out and test some products and uh, see what they have in store. I'm actually in the market for a new scope, so I'm going to compare a lot of big brands that I'm interested in and uh, see what they can do in low light conditions and outside the box here and not in a retail store. It's, uh, it's right around 8, 825 right now. We're uh, 15 minutes past sundown, so we've got another 15 minutes of legal hunting light left. We're going to kick off in about five minutes here and we're going to start running through these scopes during the last pretty much the last 10 minutes of legal hunting light and then we're gonna we're gonna stop we're gonna come around we're gonna do it again so the second iteration we're gonna do is gonna be after legal hunting light more into predator legal hunting light um, and then we're just gonna keep going as that sun goes down as that light fades as all the colors change as far as what the human eye can see and we're just gonna go to the last man standing it's already a little fuzzy seeing the target and the crosshair together This one's already tough to pick it up. You having trouble seeing it? Yeah, I got it now. It took a little bit though. And this left edge. There we go. That's a lot better. Daylight above the target. There it was. All right, moving over. There it was. Moving over. There it was. All right, moving over. All right, I'm just gonna jump around and pull them up and see my initial thoughts right away. I can't even tell what target we're at. So I got crosshairs down on this. All right, I'm still good here. I feel like I'm struggling, but I feel like my eyes are struggling more than anything right now. So I can see just the color pop on the sage a lot better now. Yeah, this would be the clearest that I've seen. The VX3i is the one that you said you would have chosen in low light. Mm -hmm. This has, out of all three of those scopes online, this has the worst possible combination, right? Yeah. Due to a small objective and a larger magnification than those ones. Interestingly enough, because of that, the refraction rate of the light and the colors are so slow that your image quality is so much better. And because of that, it seems brighter or you're able to pull images out and have that contrast resolution clarity a lot better than you would in some of these other scopes. You're gonna start seeing some glare now. So up at 300 right now, it is clear, but as I go up the hill. So it's fine right now, but I'm starting to see a little bit of amber. Like at the base of the scope, it's almost reflecting up uh, a lot more glare right now i'm not getting any glare 
even around the outsides like I was for that Zeiss. It makes it look easy right there. I'm gonna give it like two minutes and then jump back down. So the glare's starting to pop through pretty good on that. That's bad. Almost like an old fuzzy TV where you see everything moving in there. I'm getting no difference in this. It's still perfectly clear. So right now I couldn't see the target with my naked eye. I'm actually better to spot through the scope than I am with my own eyes. All right, it's about 6.30 a.m. right now. Um, sun's well come up now and you pretty much can't see the targets out there with the naked eye. I'm picking them all up. I'm just getting the bright sun hitting my eyes actually more than the scope. So if I look right into the sun at the target, I can pick the target up, but I'm getting glare. It's like the reticle almost illuminates itself, but it's definitely a lot of glare in the scope still. I haven't really noticed any difference in the scope from sun up to now, as far as the glare of anything. It's looked the same since we started. Um, I was always interested in a loophole scope and have actually been looking at them, but yeah, through these tests, um, it surprised me even more than I realized it could do. It's hard to think of how to describe it until you really look through those and you can see the small details. We work to create epic moments. Uh, I have two boys and I can tell you when we get together, that's what we talk about. We talk about the times we hunted together. More importantly, it's creating an epic moment for our warfighters. And I can tell you every single person in this building is motivated by that. Bruce gets some great letters though. He gets, gets letters where something bad has happened rifle was knocked 20 feet away. I re-engaged, my, sto my scope was right on and everything worked out. He was holding it, came in, hit the objective up into the turret and straight up. So it kept him from getting hit and he had to use that for the next 10 days and it worked fine. But those are the things that, that I get to read to our entire team and I'll guarantee you every, every one of the 700 people here is motivated by that. Uh, if it'll survive that, you've, I want it. When I'm out there, I want it to say loophole. It makes you feel pretty good.